Hello everyone, in this screencast we're going to take a look at chapter 11 of our study guide, The Rise and Spread of Islam, which begins on page 107 in your study guide. Start with the summary. As the empires that lent their grandeur to the classical period of early civilization fell into decline, the barren desert of the Arabian Peninsula witnessed the development of a belief system that evolved into a religious, political, and economic world system. Dar al-Islam, or the House of Islam, united the sacred and secular institutions. The Word of Muhammad The Arabian Peninsula, into which Muhammad was born in 570, was a hub of ancient caravan routes. Although the coastal regions of the peninsula were inhabited by settled peoples, the interior region provided a homeland for nomadic tribes called Bedouins. Located in the interior of the peninsula was the city of Mecca, which served both as a commercial center and as the location of a religious shrine for the polytheistic worship common to the nomadic peoples of the peninsula. Pilgrims were in the habit of visiting Mecca and its revered shrine, the Kaaba, a cubic structure that housed a meteorite. The merchants of Mecca enjoyed a substantial profit from these pilgrims. Muhammad, an orphan from the merchant class of Mecca, was raised by his grandfather and uncle. He married a local widow, a wealthy local widow, and businesswoman named Khadija. About 1610, Muhammad experienced the first of a number of revelations that he believed came from the Archangel Gabriel. In these revelations, he was told that there is only one God called Allah in Arabic. Allah was one of the gods in the Arabic pantheon. Although the peoples of the Arabian Peninsula had already been exposed to monotheism through Jewish traders and Arabic converts to Christianity, Muhammad's fervent proclamation of the existence of only one God angered the merchants of Mecca, who anticipated decreased profits from pilgrimages if the revelations of Muhammad were widely accepted. In 622, realizing that his life was in danger, Muhammad and his followers fled to the city of Yathrib, later called Medina, about 200 miles northwest of Mecca. Here, Muhammad was allowed to freely exercise his role as prophet of the new faith, and the numbers of believers in the new religion grew. The flight of Muhammad from Mecca to Medina called the Hijra, became the first year in the Muslim calendar. In Medina, Muhammad oversaw the daily lives of his followers, organizing them into a community of believers known as the Ummah. The well-being of the Ummah included programs concerning all aspects of life, from relief for widows and orphans to campaigns for military defense. In 629, Muhammad and his followers journeyed to Mecca to make a pilgrimage to the Kaaba, now incorporated as a shrine in the Islamic faith. The following year they returned as successful conquerors of the city, and in 632 they again participated in the Hajj. In 632, Muhammad died without appointing a successor, an omission that would have a profound effect on the future of Islam. The Teachings of Islam The term Islam means submission, while the name Muslim applied to the followers of Islam means one who submits. Muhammad viewed his revelations as a completion of those of Judaism and Christianity, and perceived himself not as a deity, not as God, but as the last in a series of prophets of the one God, Allah. He considered Abraham, Moses, and Jesus 
also among the prophets of Allah. According to the teachings of Islam, the faithful must follow a set of regulations known as the five pillars. The five pillars include, number one, faith. In order to be considered a follower of Islam, a person must, procre must proclaim in the presence of a Muslim the following statement. There is no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. Number two, prayer. The Muslim must pray at five prescribed times daily, each time facing the holy city of Mecca. Number three, fasting. The faithful must fast from dawn to dusk during the days of the holy month of Ramadan, a commemoration of the first revelation of Muhammad. Number four, almsgiving. The Muslim is to pay the zakat, or teeth, for the needy. And finally, number five, the hajj. At least once, the follower of Islam is required to make a pilgrimage to the Kaaba in the holy city of Mecca. The faithful are released from this requirement if they are too ill or too poor to make the journey. The revelations in the teachings of Muhammad were not compiled into a single written document until after his death. The resulting Quran, or holy book of the Muslims, was completed in 650. In addition, the sayings of Muhammad were compiled into books of the Hadith. After the death of Muhammad, the Sharia, or moral law, was compiled. In addition to addressing the issues of everyday life, the Sharia established political order and provided for criminal justice. The split between the Sunni and the Shia. After the death of Muhammad in 632, the Ummah chose Abu Bakr, one of the original followers of Muhammad, as the first caliph, or successor to the Prophet. The office of the caliph united both secular, meaning non-religious, and religious authority in the person of one leader. When the third caliph, Uthman, of the Umayyad family was assassinated, Ali, the cousin and son-in-law of Muhammad, was appointed caliph. Soon, controversy arose over his appointment. As time progressed, the disagreement became more pronounced, resulting in a split in the Muslim world that exists to the present. After the assassination of Ali in 661, the Shia sect, or group, believing that only a member of the family of Muhammad should serve as a caliph, erose to support the descendants of Ali. On the other hand, the Sunni group, who eventually became the largest segment of Islam, believed that the successor of the caliphate should be chosen from among the Ummah, or Muslim community, and accepted the earliest caliphs as legitimate rulers of Islam. The Early Expansion of Islam Shortly after the death of Muhammad, the new religion of Islam embarked upon a rapid drive for expansion. Unlike the Buddhist and Christian religions, which expanded by means of missionary endeavor and commercial activity, Islam at first extended its influence by military conquest. Islam spread swiftly throughout portions of Eurasia and Africa. Within a year after the death of Muhammad, most of the Arabian Peninsula was united under the banner of Islam. Persia was conquered in 651 with the overthrow of the Sassanid dynasty. By the latter years of the 7th century, which is the 600s, the new faith had reached, had reached Syria, Mesopotamia, Palestine, and Egypt. At the, time, at the same time, Islam extended into Central Asia, east of the Caspian Sea, where it competed with Buddhism. During the 8th century, Muslim armies reached present-day Tunisia, Algeria, and Morocco. Hindu dominated northwest India and the Iberian Peninsula, which is present-day Spain and Portugal. The earliest Muslim conquerors were not as concerned with the spread of religious belief as they were with the extension of power for the Muslim leaders and people. The Umayyad Caliphate 
After the assassination of Ali in 661, the Umayyad family came to power in the Islamic world. Establishing their capital at Damascus in Syria, the Umayyad were noted for the following. Number one, an empire that emphasized Arabic ethnicity over adherence to Islam. Number two, inferior status was assigned to converts to Islam. There was respect for Jews and Christians as people of the book, although Although required to pay taxes for charity and on property, Jews and Christians were allowed freedom of worship and self-rule within their communities. And finally, luxurious living for the ruling families, which prompted riots among the general population. These riots among the general population led to the overthrow of the Umayyad by the Abbasid dynasty in 750. Although most of the Umayyad were killed in the takeover, one member of the family escaped to Spain where he established the Caliphate of Cordoba. The Abbasid Caliphate. The Abbasids originally supported the Shiites by the Shiites, became increasingly receptive to the Sunni also. Establishing their capital at Baghdad in present-day Iraq, the Abbasids differed from the Umayyad in granting equal status to converts to Islam under the, under the Abbasids. Converts experienced new opportunities for advanced education and career development. advancement. Trade was heightened from the Western Mediterranean world to China. The learning of the ancient Greeks, Romans, and Persians was preserved. Greek logic, particularly that of Aristotle, penetrated Muslim thought. The Indian system of numbers, which included the use of zero as a placeholder, was carried by caravan from India to the Middle East and subsequently to Western Europe, where the numbers were labeled Arabic numerals. In mathematics, the fields of algebra, geometry, and trigonometry were further refined. The astrolab, which measured the positions of the stars, was improved. The study of astronomy produced maps of the stars. Optic surgery became a specialty and human anatomy was studied in detail. Muslim cartographers produced some of the most detailed maps in the world. The number and size of urban or city centers such as Baghdad, Cairo, and Cordoba increased. Institutions of higher learning in Cairo, Baghdad, and Cordoba arose by the 12th century. In the arts, calligraphy and designs called arabesques adorned writing and pottery. New architectural styles arose. Buildings were commonly centered around a patio area. Minarets, towers from which the faithful received the call to prayer, topped mosques or, or Muslim places of, places of worship. Mosques are Muslim places of worship. Great literature, such as poetic works and the Arabian Nights, enriched Muslim culture. Persian language and literary style was blended with that of Arabic. Mystics called Sufis, focusing on an emotional union with Allah, began missionary work to spread Islam. Although responsible for much of the advancement of Islamic culture, the Abbasids found their vast empire increasingly difficult to govern. We've heard that before. The dynasty failed to address the problem of succession within the Islamic world, meaning how to decide who the next person in charge would be, and high taxes made the leaders less and less popular. Independent kingdoms began to arise within the Abbasid Empire, one of them in Persia, where local leaders, calling themselves Sultan, took control of Baghdad in 945. The Persians were challenged by the Seljuk Turks from Central Asia who chipped away at the Byzantine Empire. The weakening Persian Sultanate allied with the Seljuks, whose contacts with the Abbasids had led them to begin converting to Sunni Islam in the middle of the 10th century. By the middle of the 11th century, Seljuks controlled Baghdad. In the 13th century, the Abbasid dynasty ended when Mongol invaders executed the Abbasid Caliph. In, Seljuk, in the Seljuk takeover of Jerusalem that prompt, prompted the beginnings of the Crusades in 1095, 
divisions within the Muslim world followed Christianity.